Halloween. Tomorrow's the uh, New York City Marathon. Yeah, scary, you know. Well, you know well, what could go wrong there, right? <laughs> no, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. New York's gonna be fine. Just like, just like Boston's fine after the marathon, you know. Well, that Boston marathon was scary, man. That was scary, man. Because I, I, I love Boston. I love the people there. But that was, that was probably the most frightening, sadistic, terrorist attack ever. J just think about it. 26 miles. 26 miles. Uneasy, nervous laughter. Uh, as it only got worse, unfortunately, the audience uh, heeded the applause sign and uh, applauded uh, roundly uh, after uh, Chris Rock uh, mocked the Boston Marathon bombing and mocked and insulted the Freedom Center, the Freedom Tower in New York and everything it stands for. Joining us now, founder of Less Government, Seton Motley and host of the syndicated radio show, The Roger Hedgecock Show, Roger Hedgecock and uh, Roger um, despicable display even by Chris Rock standards. Uh, he's a man who has uh, tweeted out about the 4th of July, happy white man's Independence Day, and you know he has a whole history, but uh, to, to, to make light of the Boston Marathon bombing and then to say that the uh, U.S. is arrogant to put uh, a building where the World Trade Center stood, uh, there's something really wrong with that. Well, you know, it's the usual leftist so-called comedy. Remember Bill Maher, of course. Uh, but you, you do have a he does have a point with the with the uh, World Trade Center going back in there when he kind of it was a funny line when he said, look, there's not going to be a lot of retail in there. There's not going to be a lot of people wanting to really go there. And that's the fear, you know, that uh, the left also thinks is funny. So it's a whole leftist mindset, uh, Steve. You know, I kind of laugh off these uh, these so-called comedians because they're simply stalking horses for the usual leftist uh, rhetoric. What about it, Seton? Well, yeah, I mean, it Roger touches on a good point there. They're they're making fun of us for being concerned about Ebola, where they don't actually dis delineate between us being concerned about uh, catching Ebola where I live in the middle of nowhere and asking the re very reasonable question: Why are we importing people with Ebola and considering importing non-citizens with Ebola? So I, I think I think you're I think Roger's right. I think it touches into a a mindset of the left is looking for a reason to laugh at the at conservatives for being overly fearful of things meanwhile they believe in cl climate change yeah well yeah that <laughs> and we're going to do a segment later on not only a, a give me five segment on the this chris rock uh tirade but also on uh, the uh, founder of the weather channel on cnn that was pretty entertaining as well all right let, let's move on and let's move on to uh uh, the remarks uh, made by uh, uh, former U.S. Senator against Joni Ernst. And, of course, uh, we played them earlier at the top of the show. I'm sure you guys are familiar with them. And, and for Tom Harkin to bring up, you know, how she might be good-looking and sound nice and all that, I, can you imagine what, what will happen if Hillary runs uh, and, and anybody dares, dares to criticize even her pantsuit or anything about her, the media will go crazy. They haven't really reacted to, to this uh, remark at all. Roger? Well, I'll, t I'll tell you, of course, they're not going to react to it. You can have a war on women when they're conservative women. You can't have a war on women when they're liberal women, and that's the way the Obama media goes. And, Steve, we've been subjected to this now for almost decades. Uh, but the truth of it is, the Re Democrat Party put a lot of pressure on Harkin. He was holding back millions of dollars from previous campaigns that he had not spent, money that he could have put into the campaign for Braley, the, Re the Democrat candidate for U.S. Senate against Joni Ernst. He didn't do it. He's keeping the money for a foundation thing he's doing, and the Democrats are livid. So he had to say something. He hasn't even campaigned for Braley. He's been nowhere to be found in Iowa, and he's the guy with a distinguished record in years and years of being reelected. So the Democrats are very unhappy with him, and he had to come out and say something before the election. Well, this was it, and of course it was stupid, demeaning, and I think it helped Ernst. What about it, Seton? Uh, the age discrepancy between Senator Harkin and Taylor Swift is worse than... Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. Um, that, that, was, that was creepy in and of itself. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, Chuck Todd's former boss, Tom Harkin, um, sat on millions of dollars for what? I don't know, because he's not going to run for anything anymore, as far as anyone could tell. And I, I just heard from Hillary Clinton, Roger, you mispronounced Braley's name. 
So <laughs> no, That's no, right. no. It wasn't Hillary Clinton. Oh, it was Bill Michelle Obama, Obama, Obama and Bill Michelle and Bill Obama. Clinton, by the way. Hey, Bill Clinton. That's right. yes. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna come back. Uh, you and uh, you and uh, me and the panel uh, will we'll be uh, rejoined. Uh, by you two guys uh, after we speak to the former governor of New Mexico, uh, Gary Johnson, who will be here in studio with me. Uh, we could react to some of the things he's going to say about uh, the political climate and tomorrow's midterms. Uh, Seton Motley and uh, Roger Hedgecock will uh, rejoin us for part two of the uh, now famed Mallsburg panel, as it's been come to, uh, to be called. And uh, we will do that when we return. Gary Johnson will join us right here on Newsmax Television, The Steve Malsberg Show.